Hey everybody, we are on a little drive, Josh the Vault Guy. Hi there. And thought, why not make use of this time? I have a lot of questions that you guys have sent that were specifically for vaults. I've been saving them up until I could corral Josh into uh, and now, answering And now them. I'm corralled in the truck. He's corralled in the truck. He can't go nowhere. All the questions, bring them. So um, we're going to ask questions while we're headed to go get some dinner. So here we go. Um, got a message and it says, I love to hunt as well. I have questions. Did you set up the vault by opening the grave, then using the mechanical system to move it into the grave? So I guess we should give background if anybody is watching that doesn't um, know you uh, and me. I'm Carrie the Mortician, uh, 20 plus years as a licensed funeral director, and this is Josh, my and, boyfriend. And, and had, he is a variable. Oh, sorry. No, you're you no, you're all right. You go ahead and introduce you. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't matter. No, go uh, ahead and introduce. I, I have 26 years of experience as a as a burial vault guy, as a vault installer, and then I ran a crematory for about a year and a half. Um, but yeah, so so. <clears throat> So question one, did you set up the vault by opening the grave, then using the mechanical system to move it into the grave? Well, I, we technically don't open graves. The caretaker of the cemetery, I'm, I'm paying attention to the road, don't worry. <laughs> uh, the caretaker of the cemetery, who is technically called a sexton, the sexton would dig the grave. Um, now, if I showed up in there was a cave in or something like that i would jump down in there with my shovel uh, after i got my planking set up around the grave to make things stable for the lower device to sit on and stuff um i'd dig the grave out level it off and then yes i would use my either a, a truck or a motorized vault trailer uh it's got a crane way that pulls out over the grave and that's what sits on my planks also uh to lower the vault in do you have any decision making to set the vault up the way you want it? Uh, kind of. I mean, a lot of times we'd have to do what's called a fault setup, and that's when we would not even put the burial vault or the cover out. You just set up the all the graveside stuff, uh, tent, fake grass, lowering device, but the lowering device is just sitting on the ground. And when the procession gets there, they guide the casket onto the lowering device and they have their service. And then after the service, uh, I would come up and would usually have a hand from the sexton or whoever, but we would, I'd get the burial vault close to where the casket was sitting on the lowering device and we'd pick it up and move it and lower it down into the, to the vault that way. And then I'd put the cover on the vault and then I'd set everything at once, once the sexton got the whole redug or whatever was going on. So. I've seen the YouTube videos on how the vault is installed, but how do you know how big the casket is going to be and how much deeper the grave is? Well, most standard caskets are a certain size and will fit in a certain certain vault. Um, if And the funeral homes know that. And so if the funeral home has an oversized person that they have to put in a bigger vault, which is def it's just called an oversized vault, uh, there's many different sizes. But if it's in an oversized vault, they let us know. They let, you know, the sexton know uh, so that he can dig a bigger grave because the vault itself is, yes, going to be bigger. Um, and, you know, up to a certain size, I could set those oversized vaults with a barrel vault trailer. But if they were over a certain size, then they would have to use a boom truck, like a knuckle boom, boom them in because they're just too big. Too What's heavy. that again? <laughs> Do they have to have a wood in the bottom of the vault to prevent the damage of the vault and the grave before the casket is placed in there? I guess I'm not following. Do they have to have wood in the bottom of vault of the to vault to prevent the damage of the vault and the grave? Oh, maybe like covering it? Uh, no, it's... No, I mean, that the burial vault itself is concrete, and that's what's protecting the casket. And no, once the casket's in the vault, I mean, the casket's not going to get damaged. But 
if you mean, I don't, they might mean like cribbing in the grave. I don't know. A lot of times you'll see graves dug and then they have uh, what, what they call cribbing inside it and it's wood all the way around. And that's if it's in a real sandy place or a real rocky, loamy place where the grave will keep caving in on you, then they'll crib it. And, you know, then you set the vault inside there. The thing with, with setting it that way, though, is you've got to make sure when you set that vault in the bottom of the grave that you're not pinching the cribbing off. They can still get the cribbing out so that once the vault's in there and sealed, they can pull that cribbing out and then they can backfill the grave. So Justin and Ashley, they said, um, I'm Des, so I'm very curious about the whole process. Thank you for your service, Josh, and treat Carrie with love. Of, I most definitely will. <laughs> so yes to the earlier question, we are an item uh, about one year, seven months or something. I kind of count it like I'm 14 <laughs> years old yeah, or something. And... We've, been, we've been dating for a year and a half. <laughs> um, are you drunk? No. <laughs> I haven't had anything to drink in like a week. No. Over a week. Yeah, and I haven't had anything to drink either, so. No, neither one of us are drunk and I'm <clears throat> driving, so I would hope I'm not drunk. Does the vault decompose? The vault will not decompose, no. The vault is made of concrete, like I said. Some of them are plastic lined with a like a tar base seal. It's called a butyl seal. Or some of them are just straight concrete and there is no seal in the cover. It's just the weight of the cover. Uh, you know, the the like regular concrete vaults with no seal in them or no liner in them. Water will get in there eventually, and even if you're in a sealed casket, I mean, it, it could do damage to the casket. Um, the damage to the body is highly unlikely, but. Um, <clears throat> I was looking on the Wilbert Vault website and noticed that they had standard size vaults and those for infants. Mm -hmm. If a child aged three to 10 died, would they use an adult size vault or do companies make smaller size vaults for children? We made all kinds of vaults and we made a lot of small vaults for kids. Thank goodness we didn't have to use them very often because that's the worst kind of funeral or burial have to do. But well, and a lot of the caskets, depending on the size, if it's an infant, then they're a lot of times two in one where they're meant to the whole lid comes off to use as a casket and then also put the lid on and then you that acts as the yeah. final kind of vault as well and i want to bring up i got a message from somebody the other day or, or it was a comment on a video and it said i know you're a salesperson i know you're not trying to push the use of vaults but could you not just exclusively use the word vault when you're talking about um, outer burial containers and they meant that a vault was different than like a grave liner which is a basic vault and so yeah. I responded with a vault is anything that encases a casket or coffin which is the definition of a vault so yeah. burial vault doesn't just mean the ones that seal or have liners or anything it's just whatever's encasing that casket yep. or a coffin there's all different kinds <clears throat> do all vaults come with a plate on the cover with the deceased name and dates of birth and death or is that an add-on that is an add-on in that like with the wilbert products that was usually the first tier of line vaults the called the monticello um those the vault company that i worked for we would do a nameplate and some kind of decoration um, with those. And also actually a Monarch, which would be a regular concrete grave liner, but it's got the butyl seal in it. So the cover seals, but it doesn't have a plastic liner inside it like the Monticellas, but we would usually do uh, nameplate and decorations for those too. Is there a specific direction the body must be placed in the retort? We're hopping over to a cremation. Yes, uh, the well, depending on where the burner is, but like the, the retort that I ran, the the flame, the burner was at the back of the machine. So you would always put the body in head first because that's, you know, the toughest part of the body t to burn up is the head and the chest area with, you know, <clears throat> your muscle tissue, everything else is. Um, John asks, can a vault leak? Yes. Yes, a vault can leak. And... That's why when you're setting those 
lined sealed units, you've got to be careful to not get dirt around the lip of the base before you put the cover on because it can mess with the integrity of the seal. I will tell you those vaults, if they're set proper, will, will not leak. I mean, I, I've seen bodies exhumed and been part of exhumations that, you know, you got to break the cover to get it off. And when you open it up, I mean, it's, it's dry in there. Um, but like concrete grave liners, the Monarchs with no plastic seal. Yeah. Those are hydrostatic pressure underground, which is the, the, the pressure of the water forcing on that ball all the way around it over the years that concrete's porous it's going to suck that water in and yeah those those grave liners usually when they did the regular concrete grave liners when we poured them before they were dry we would put a hole in each end of the base of those because they're poured upside down and then we'd flip them over so just for that purpose of once you bury somebody in the ground the vault doesn't fill up with water and the casket's not floating the water will drain out underneath it a um, couple questions I'm going to answer. One, yep. the day is young. There's still plenty of time to get drunk. Some kind of have says. <laughs> uh -huh. um, someone <laughs> said, how did you get interested in embalming for me? So I worked in a funeral home in high school and just curiosity and became comfortable around it and kind of grew into it. So it was kind of general over time. Uh, let's see. Question, question. I see there was another funeral home that was selling body parts without the consent of the family. How do you know who to trust? Um, the one that was just in the news this last week, uh, was because they were finally sentenced. That case has been going on a long time. I covered that in my first naughty funeral director video. Um, so if you don't know which one you can go back and watch that. And, um, so that's been, it's not a new one. You, you really have to look at reviews, look at better business bureau, kind of walk into someplace. What does your gut tell you? Uh, it's just like a doctor, just like anywhere you have to see where you're comfortable because you know, our internal thoughts and stuff are going to guide us hopefully to the better place. What are the best brand name uh, vaults? I would say Wilbert, Wilbert and Doric probably, but Wilbert's the most popular. That's the leading name in the, in the vault industry always has been as far as I know. And hello to everybody. I'm seeing all these, um, I'm reading them on his phone <laughs> because they don't stay up long enough on, on my screen. I think my grandma's vault may have broke because her grave was sunken on top. Any thoughts? Ooh, I just did a two minute on grave depression. So yep. check that out. It will answer actually all of your questions because there's a lot of reasons that graves uh, become depressed. Yep. And so um, go check out that two minute video. Um, hey, Lisa. When the casket is lowered into the grave, how easy is it to get the bands out from the, under the casket? The straps, it's usually not <clears throat> too bad. Um, and it depends on what kind of vault you're setting to. Those line vaults, it's really easy to get the, the lowering device straps out. Um, some of them, though, like if you've had a, a lot of the grave liners and stuff, the casket sits on basically just metal hooks that you use from the inside that you can pick the, the base up if you need to. And a lot of times that will, it'll pinch the straps a little bit, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Um, my mom was sold an eternal protection casket for my dad. <laughs> That's terrible. Saying it would completely protect him eternally. This was many years ago. Oh, I am sure there is somewhere, yes, that this still is going to be done. Um, I was just told the other day by a family, they called around for cremation pricing. And one of the places told them, don't you want to have a respectable cremation for your dad? And it was like, <clears throat> how is it any less or more respectable if it's the exact same crematory <laughs> that right. every funeral home uses? It's like the same thing. So yeah i hate seeing stuff like that oh carrie that's a good one you guys are giving good um 
questions. Some of these about movie scenes that you guys are asking, I'll go back and write them down. And when we do our kind of like reaction to those scenes, we'll put these on that list. I just saw they asked. You're welcome, you got, Tim. I saw somebody ask if you have to have a casket or can you put somebody directly in a vault? No. Generally, I've never seen somebody put directly in a vault in my 26 years of doing it. I've like, done one sh like wrapped body in in sheets and we buried well but that's about yeah like the muslim burials that i've done they just wrap their loved ones oh, yep i got it they wrap their loved ones in a sheet you know in a burial shroud basically and then <clears throat> uh, a couple people will jump down in the grave they'll hand the body down they set it on the actual physical dirt and then what we put over the top of it is basically uh inverted vault it's called an air seal so that that person is literally buried on the ground and then it's just a dome top that you put around them over the top of them to utter dishing yeah yep. utter dish yep same thing um my daughter's 13 she told me what she wants to do embalming she's very curious about the process we'll tell her to email me anytime and i'm happy to answer questions for her um so sad about lisa marie yeah, it is. It's so sudden. She was yeah, just. Was a shocker. I think there was footage of her from like the Golden Globes or whatever. Two days, three days yeah, before. Yeah, it's just like crazy. Yep. Is this standard size? Um, we already talked about the children thing. Can you discuss your thoughts on the recent identification of the boy in the box in Philadelphia and the Lady of the Dunes? In um. I will wait and cover these in Victims of Crime with the Boys next time we try to talk about them. How did I become interested in the business? It was a high school job and it just kind of grew over the years, became comfortable and more comfortable and more curious. And how come we didn't get to pick which vault my mom went in? I'm not sure the situation for you if maybe it was a lawn crypt and so it came with the grave space or if it had been pre-arranged already that she had pre-funded and pre-arranged it and then you didn't need to pick i'm not sure what your situation is exactly sometimes the lid of the vault is beside the shelf on like a shelf thing on the beside the grave Great. on like a shelf thing yeah. and then other times the vault lid is not seen Yep. why is this uh just depends on what kind of vault you got and like we i was talking about earlier with the name plates and decorations on them <clears throat> excuse me um it, those you'll usually display because they've been painted a certain color gold silver blue whatever person's they, name, face yeah or... and they've, yeah and they've got you know <clears throat> a, a name plate decoration on it and so you usually display those but if it's just like a concrete grave liner or you know a monarch or something something more simpler um then no we just keep it on our trailer or truck and it makes it easier and quicker at the end of things to you know get our job done at the end of it all when we're sealing things up is the vault is a vault installer thing a side gig or does this pay decent no that was Wait. my full-time occupation for 26 years it, it you know depending on who you work for and where you work it can be decent Can the family look to make sure before cremation that it, that it is their family member and that they are all intact? Yep. Yep. They have that right. And a lot of people, when I ran that crematory, wanted to see the, you know, make, see the body, see their loved one before it got, you know, put in the retort. Yep. How do they get the vault lid off if they have to exhume the body? Um, if it's just a concrete grave liner or something that's not sealed and just hook chains to it and you can pull it right off now if it's a monticello or any of the line vaults that are sealed vaults that are the monticello or above then uh, like i said before uh we've had to pull a sling out you know you dig around the vault put a sling around it you pull it all out at once with the boom truck with the knuckle boom usually sit it on the ground and then hook chains to the top and put pressure on it. And a lot of times if you beat around it with a hammer, it will end up popping loose eventually after it hangs there for a while. But most of the time you just have to break the cover. You break the cover and take the pieces of the cover off. And then if that person's, you know, getting put 
or getting reburied or whatever, you just you bring another vault, you put them in a new vault. Um, people are asking about Josh's job. We've explained a couple times that um, crematory got shut down. Yep. Because uh, the funeral home that was buying it, there was a change of ownership and there's some paperwork stuff. And so they had to shut down for a while. So he's been sidelined from crematory for a hot minute. But yep. we'll see where he lands when it gets up and going and stuff. Um, all right. We'll do like two last ones. Do cemeteries typically object to people being buried with the cremated remains of their pets? What, what was that again? I'm sorry. I was reading one thing on Do the screen. Do cemeteries typically object to people being buried with the ashes of their pets? Mm, not usually. If it's a pet, no. They, they, fr don't they frown know. on it, but most of the time, yeah, they don't even know. It's tucked into, like, the little urn the or casket. whatever is tucked into the casket, so yeah. they never see it. Now, it used to be a law, like, it was the biggest is when New York changed it, because they had a law that pets and humans could not be commingled and buried in the same cemetery. And that was just changed maybe two, three years ago at this point. Yeah. But it kind of made news because it was something, you know, you don't know about these laws and what is law. Uh, some cemeteries just may not allow it though, if yeah. they know about it. Yeah. I saw it flash up on the screen here. They, somebody asked me how many exhumations have I done? Mm. And you know, over my 26 years, it doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. Um, but I bet you I've done, no, oh, probably six or eight throughout my whole career as a vault man. or been part of six or eight for various reasons. Um, Brian says, do all caskets eventually explode with time? No. No. But here's the thing. Like, it's does the tree make a noise when it falls in the woods? We don't know what's happening to all the caskets. You know, the only right. thing we see is if there's a disinterment or an exhumation. It's and the only time you get to see them, yeah. Who knows what percentage of all burials those are of what we're seeing. And a lot of those even, you don't open the casket. So it's such a small percentage of of us seeing what actually is happening under the ground that yeah. who knows for sure. Yep. Um, uh, who knows what the body looks like. It's just like when they're not exhumed, there's no way to tell there's too many variables with bodies and caskets. What kind of schooling do you need for cremation? You can get the certificate online. Yep. You can just take an online class basically through it's, it's called can of the cremation association in North America. They're the biggest certifier of crematories and crematory operators that I know of. <clears throat> That's who I'm certified through. Oh, man, I'm going to do one last quick. Okay. Um, do you guys think about your own deaths? Have you planned your own funerals? Go, you go first. <clears throat> um, yeah, I try not to think about my own death. I'm, I'm such a paranoid freak about overthinker you're about just an everything. overthinker yeah she's um, not a paranoid freak she's i mean just an overthinker. so you know i've already assumed that you know we're all dying you know either <laughs> of us are dying at any moment of which it is legit truth that it could happen so then i don't think about it but i can go into a tailspin sometimes just thinking about yeah the whole thing um have i planned my own funeral it changes over time i think the more things I see at funerals, the more it steers you. It, yeah, it makes yeah. you change what all of your thought process. I agree. So, um, I mean, if I had to do it right now, I would want to be just left until I'm stinky and dead and then just natural <laughs> buried. Like, make sure there's no chance I'm coming back. Mm. Um, but it's not about me. It's about my family. It's about what they need. If they need me embalmed and hung, hanging around for a few days, then I guess whatever. Uh, it's really up to them. So every time I've traveled, like kind of a big trip, especially when I was married, so that there was directions for all of our stuff, you know, kind of in it, I would leave, we would leave a letter just saying, hey, this is what we want for our <laughs> funeral update and stuff, because you just never know. Yep. And I mean, yeah, I've thought about my own death, but I, I don't think about it very often. And 
I mean, it doesn't bother me. We don't get to pick when. We don't get to pick how. Someday it's going to happen. It's nothing. The way I try to look at things is if it's something that is completely out of my control, I have no control over, then I don't worry about it. And no, I have not planned my own funeral. The only wish that I really have is just to cremate me. I mean, that's that's what I want done. So yeah, that's about it. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you yeah, for the thank questions. You. Yeah, and good questions. Joining us while we're headed, we're headed to go grab some food. Yep. So it's hot, hot date night on the, the YouTube, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, well, thank you guys. Send questions, Carrie at carriethemortician.com and we'll answer them on the next live. Thanks guys. Bye. See you.